evening and welcome. I'm Jeff Spence from the Office of Alumni Relations at Thomas Jefferson University, and it's my pleasure to welcome you here this evening. Tonight, alumna Kim Wana shares the design lessons she's learned on set that you can apply when setting the scene in your own home. Kim is an Emmy Award-winning set decorator, and her work can be seen on the sets of hit shows and movies like Veep, Bones, The Good Place, Parks and Recreation, and the recently released Netflix movie, Moxie. Currently, she's working on the set of the FX series, American Crime Story, the impeachment of William Jefferson Clinton. Kim, it's our pleasure to have you with us tonight and we're thrilled. Uh, if you're ready, we'll get started and take it away. Yeah, uh, thank you so much for having me and just even acknowledging me from my alumni, that's amazing. So thank you so much. Um, I, I did, I graduated in 1999 from textile uh, then, and then it turned into Philadelphia University. I am a set decorator, which means that I decorate sets for TV, film, commercials. Um, I am responsible for furniture, the lighting, rugs, the tchotchkes, which are like small things on your shelf. I, uh, other sets, like if it's a store, I would provide the, the clothing racks and the clothing and the lighting. If it's a restaurant, I do the chairs, the tables, the little candles, the silverware, the plates, the glassware, the lighting, the maitre d' stand, anything like that, furniture, I'm responsible for. So it depends on the set, but basically I make the character before they even say any words. That's, uh, that's basically how I do my job. Um, I wanted to start with just a little picture of uh, The Good Place to welcome everyone. Everything's fine. <laughs> and that's kind of how much furniture you should put in a room when you stage a house, by the way. <laughs> you should almost keep it bare. No, I'm kidding. Um, but yeah, I wanted to start with that. And then I wanted to show you a little time lapse um, this was taking on the set of Veep for season seven for our Oval Office dress. And um, this was taken over two days. We basically, everything in the room I have sourced, um, artwork, the chairs, the tables, the lamps, everything, the clock. Um, I've done an enormous amount of research to make sure that it's exact to what I'm trying to uh, replicate. In this case, it was the character's Oval Office, so I didn't really have to match much, but I took a mix of all presidential Oval Offices and tried to give it some feminine touch because she was a female president. There you go. Um, but we'll talk a lot about Veep and some of the rules that we had for that show. But yeah, that's uh, that's two days. You might see me sitting a lot in that. Um, I was eight months pregnant with twins, so I took I took some some chair time. Uh, but you also I also sit in the chairs, I sit in the sofas, I make sure that the character feels comfortable in their environment and what would they have around them and what would she have on her desk and um, yeah. But it took um, it's a lot that that Oval Office took a lot to to get together. I had <laughs> I had about uh, we knew it was coming up. I'm not gonna lie, but we had about a week and a half to get everything and then uh, the two days to dress it. So yeah, uh, next I uh, thought I'd just show you a couple photos of the scope of my work. Um, I've decorated different sets over the years. Um, this is the city council in parks and recreation. Next is uh, the good place, uh, their last season. and redoing one of the iconic sets that they had established in season one, Eleanor and Chidi's house. The next one would be the Red Room of the White House in Veep, which I particularly love. I love recreating these White House sets and doing the research and learning about our, our American history. Our American White House is an amazing uh, building and, and just beautiful, I, I feel. Um, next, I have uh, avoid. <laughs> it's not that easy to dress a void. You really, everything's white and um, you gotta, you know, you gotta pick and choose the right things. Like all of those glass things on the shelves and 
what is it? Uh, what does it mean? Does it have any meaning? You're in a void. Who knows? But if you're, you know, you also had to see how many characters are in the scene. Who's going to sit down? Do they want them to stand up and be able to walk around? Like these are all things that come into my world as I'm as I'm dressing the sets. Um, next, I have a the other side of that Oval Office that I did. So again, this this I'll get into is very monochromatic very like tone on tone um, that we kept for that character. And then the next one is um, a campaign office, which I've done many of. <laughs> this was supposed to be like an old drugstore that we turned into Jonah Ryan's campaign office. So it was old and dirty and dingy. And this is a set. This isn't, this isn't a real place. The designer builds and designs the, the space. And then I go in and, and decorate it, everything in there. And with Veep, one of the best things is it was based really in reality, the decorating. And so there's wires and there's water bottles left everywhere. And so it, it really gives you a chance to layer these, like, you know, the guy sitting at that desk right there. He liked to, you know, shoot basketballs or whatever. You, you just get into all of these different spaces and try to think how people would live in them. And then my last, oh, and then this is the green room decorated for Christmas for Veep. Again, just, you know, it's a different layer when you have to do holidays in a, in a set. I hate, I hate doing holidays. I'm about to do Christmas right now. It's not like we could do Christmas in November or December when decorations were available. No, we're doing it now. So that's a whole nother thing of renting decorations. And now thank goodness with you know, online purchases, I can kind of get anything all year long, but it used to be a lot harder to do. So yeah, and then and then Leslie Nope's office. This is just an you know an iconic office to some people who love this show, and the layering of it over seven seasons of giving it personality and function and uh, comedy. You know, there's there's little things back there, the pictures that make it homey, her awards that she acquired over the years. So yeah. Those are a couple of my uh, of my favorite sets I think I've done. So what character are you? That's what you want to know when you're doing your your room or your house or your your home. Are you eclectic? I mean, mid-century, traditional? Do you have to stay in those lanes when you start decorating? You don't. I mean, you could, and then it's very cohesive and it's, it looks, you know, dynamite like that set, but it's hard to do because we all go to home goods and then we like that one little thing and then it throws off the room, but you really like it. So you keep, you get it or you really love that coffee table. So I think most people are eclectic. Let's hope you're not a hoarder. <laughs> Let's just hope your place doesn't look like this because that's not good. We all have a little bit of hoard in us. We all have accumulated a lot of stuff over the years. You got to, especially if you're staging, you got to clean out. You got to get a clean, clean slate uh, if you're staging a house, but hopefully you're not a hoarder. This is more of like, did you inherit furniture? Are you trying to work in pieces that you really love that were your, your grandparents or your aunt? You know what I mean? You, you take on you know, personal things into your home that mean something to you and you want them to work. And maybe it doesn't work with your mid-century if it's something traditional. Um, there's ways to make those things work. There's ways to still appreciate this furniture and not throwing off your whole, your whole game there. Um, hopefully you're not like super over glamorous. This is a house. This is not a set. This is a ridiculous house in Beverly Hills that we shot at many times for Tahani's mansion in um, The Good Place. And it was spectacular. This is just one of the rooms I'm showing you. It was so crazy. That's the furniture they have. I don't know how these people live like this. There's black mats all over the floor for the um, film crew. So it's, it's covering up a beautiful rug. But you see all those people in your house? Yeah, you'd want to cover your rugs too. So this is then the scene that they're setting up in there. And um, I didn't really have to bring much in for this, but if glamor is your jam, I mean, golds and beiges and 
lush fabrics and patterns, that's that's pretty much how to go. I think the next one is just another room in that house. All I brought in was a table full of food. I mean, this place was just amazing. And the artwork. I always have to bring in artwork. But yeah, that if that's, if that's your jam, go for it. Most people are eclectic. This is basically what most people's houses look like. And maybe not even this much bold color because people kind of are afraid of color. Um, and that's good too, because then you could just pop items off of it and you'll make it work any way you want. But this is kind of reality when I look at some sets of like some clutter, some, you know, you get pieces that you've traveled and you put them up or, you know, bringing in trees and plants and life into your place. I feel like that's most people's home. But we we mix styles uh, every day with uh, what we have. This is two characters colliding and what I came up with for the characters on The Good Place, comfortable, but still um, style from the one character. And I mean, one guy wants to sit and read books and the other girl just wants to, you know, be lazy kind of and like cuddle on the couch. So how do you get these two characters together? And what are their color schemes and bringing that together and how they play off of them? Um, but yeah, that's pick your character. Who are you? And how do you achieve these, uh, this scheme in your house? Color is super important. So popular right now is white. Do everything white. I just moved. So I'm kind of good. It's a good timing for me to do this little talk because it just moved. I just looked at thousands of places online, like in Zillow and Redfin, and everything's white everything's white that you're interested in because it's fresh and it's new and you feel like, yeah, there's, I could do something with that. I can see it. I'm telling you right now, pictures are so important when you are doing a re like a flip or, you know, looking for houses because you want that like excitement. You don't want to see like, photos of other people's families <laughs> sorry because then you start thinking well what are, why are they moving what are they what I don't know I get distracted I like the white palette I like all that going on another way to do it would be neutrals now this I'm not supposed to show you a couple of these pictures I'm not supposed to be showing people yet because it's not out this is from what I'm working on now but it was a good example this is like the tone on tone so you do all neutrals they're slightly different colors, but it all works together. Your, your color on your wall is just a tad bit darker so that your drapery pops or vice versa. Um, then your, your trim and your ceiling are just a tad bit lighter so that those elements pop. Um, there's many things you can do in just the slightest bit of color change um, with paint. It can really you know help a lot and, and make a very polished look if you're trying to achieve that. Um, accent walls. Now this is two accent walls. It actually was the whole room. This was a project I did. Um, this is not a set. This is Amy Poehler's uh, office that I did, which she basically turned a house into an office. And this was like this back little guest house that she made into like a conference room but she wanted it to be cozy. And so I just got really comfortable chairs. She's very much into eclectic, as you can see. We went, I tested the chairs, tested the, the sofa and everything. And it was just comfortable, but she wanted like color and excitement in the room because they're creating comedy. They wanted, they wanted to be up. They wanted it to be a little busy. So that wallpaper we selected and then keep the big frames on the wall of like projects that her company had done. It worked really well. I mean, it, I know she said they spent a lot of time in that room and really loved it and didn't get too, I guess, tired of that wallpaper either because it's, it wasn't like a huge graphic. It was just, you know, uh, an ongoing scene that she really loved. Um, you could do a big graphic. Look at this one. This is, that is actually fabric that I put up um, as that, that wall, sort of headboard wall. And 
that's fun too. You could take one wall and just do one big graphic on it and have the rest of it white or a color. Um, that's another way to make a really bold statement. Um, in Amy's first house, that was her, her office. One wall we did this, I looked for the picture. I couldn't find it. It was a big underwater scene with like jellyfish. It was so cool. I can't believe I don't have a picture and, um, everything else was white. And then it was just this like bold graphic. So you can totally get away with that. There's so many, so many resources online for things like that. Um, I'm a big fan of like wallpapers direct. Um, this is where I got this and all of the <laughs> wallpaper in my part or house that I'll show you. Um, but yeah, um, again, keep it neutral, go back to being neutral and just have a little bit of color. Those, those blue silvery, silvery drapes, just give it a little bit of color. They don't warm it up. We didn't want it to be warm for Selena because she's not a warm person. So um, for, for this, it really was about keeping it almost cold, especially the way this series ends. I don't want to, I don't want to give any spoilers, but um, it's, it's a very poignant scene of her in this room. And I think the next one shows her. Yeah. So she's, one of the rules that we had here for Selena was that she would always pop her, her outfits were always pop. So we kept the, um, the designer kept the walls very like subtle. And I kept the furniture very basic, no big prints that she would be on so that she would pop. And as you can see, she's in red in this and she's all alone in this cold office and, it's a real statement for the end of the show. I really, I uh, was very like into it. So as you can see, um, but yeah. So this picture getting to staging and everything, this picture is this room that I'm in right now. And then it turns into the next one, which is my background right here. So I did two walls of the wallpaper and then two walls of color. Now, we specifically wanted to do something graphic in this room because my husband is a therapist. He does a lot of Zoom now, um, you know, therapy sessions. I have a podcast, which, you know, I can see people. I want to have a nice background. And so even though it's not done back there, this room, we wanted to be graphic. We wanted something for our Zoom or FaceTime calls that would be interesting. Um, eventually we'll have a sofa back there <laughs> and we'll have other elements, but for now, um, just the basics of the room, it either can work off of this yellow or the wallpaper behind me. And, um, I don't know if we'll do artwork on it. I don't, I might keep just it really simple because it's graphic enough and it's a very mid-century vibe. So I just, um, I don't know if we'll do artwork on it, but you can, you could certainly put some artwork on there, choose your metals, like do a silver or gold and do some really nice, like clean frames on there. That would be, you know, that would be really nice. Next, this is my little like kitchen nook. And um, I mean, how could we resist buying this? Wait, go back one second. How could we resist buying this place with that chandelier that they hung? I mean, that's why we bought it for that dinky chandelier that they gave us. I don't know what, I don't know what selling point they thought that was. That's bad staging. Let's point that out right now. That's bad. Don't do that. Uh, all white do. They put in all new floors. If you can do it. Cool. Um, dinky chandelier, no go. So that was the nook. And then what I did, because it's not a really big space. It's kind of, it's like 10 by 10. I just put wallpaper on the back and then put paint on the ceiling. And we actually have a really huge, uh, really nice chandelier up there, but it's my kitchen's not done. I couldn't show you pictures of that right now. It's not good. Um, but this with the ceiling being done, it's kind of a surprise when you walk into the room, you don't catch it. You're catching it from this camera angle. When you're in the kitchen and walking forward, you don't catch that the ceiling has the color and it's not bold but it's a nice surprise in there. And I think it really warms up the space. You also have to find something that works with the white that we chose and the flooring. So it all like works together in that, um, 
in that little space. Now, I know you're saying you took out your storage. I did. But what I did was I got Ikea pieces and made them into a banquette along that back wall. So I gained storage underneath their kitchen cabinets. And then I just made them higher and got a thick cushion. It was online. It's on Pinterest. I stole it from there. Made a whole wall of seating in the back so that we have more seating if people come over. And now I have storage. Not as much as those cabinets. I get it. But I still got storage under there, which worked out pretty good. It's already full. So yeah. <laughs> uh, next. This, you're going to say, what are you doing with all this wallpaper? I know. I know. But we love it. And we, uh, we kept it cohesive in the sense of that it all has a little bit of gold in it. It all has little flecks of like gold. And even though they're all different patterns, they're not next to each other. You don't really see one at the, or two at the same time. So this pattern is little elephants and birds and everything. And my twins walk up these stairs every morning and just say, good morning, elephants. And like pick who's your elephant today. So there's also an interaction that you can have with wallpaper, especially with kids. If you're doing their rooms or you are staging a house and you want to give that you know, impression of like, this is the nursery, there's such beautiful wallpaper that can achieve this just on one wall. And you're, you're selling that dream when you're staging. So if you're selling it as a nursery, you're, not, you're gonna tug on some heartstrings if you go for things that, that kids will appreciate. Um, so yeah, the next thing is furniture because what are you gonna sit on, right? The sofa. Again, this is the picture just because going back to this eclectic look that works for everyone, the sofa is your most important piece. You're gonna spend a lot of time on it. It's gotta be comfortable. It's the one piece I would say, don't buy online. You gotta go put your butt in it. You gotta put your feet up. It's, you gotta make sure that you're comfortable and that it works for your room. Um, this sofa is a West Elm sofa. It was pretty comfortable and uh, I don't remember the name of it, but you, you, it's, it's really important to sit in it. I bought a lot of sofas online for TV and sets and they're not really comfortable. They look great. The actors might complain that they're too hard, but they look great for a day and then, you know, I'm done with it. But it's, uh, it's tricky. It's very, read reviews if you're gonna do it. I know I'm, I'm a huge fan of Wayfair and they sell sofas. And I mean, not every sofa has been super uncomfortable. <laughs> but most of them. So I would say, try to sit in it. Sorry. Try, sorry for buying that online. Now this, this a lot of times um, you want to do a neutral sofa so that you can then change your pillows and change your style if you need to, but to choose a sofa that is timeless like the Chesterfields or, you know, if you're staying with mid century, then if you get a neutral sofa, you'll be able to swap out pillows and throws. And then ta-da, you have a new room kind of. So yeah. Next again, this is the monochromatic. Now you, if you're gonna do the monochromatic in a sofa, even if it's white or a light color, just be careful with kids. <laughs> That's all I always say. Um, but again, it's a clean palette. And especially if this was a staged home, this is like, you're selling this feeling right now. You're selling that you could have this conversation, this very formal conversation in this room. Um, so that would be the, the feeling of, of this. Next, bringing elements together that aren't the same colors, but that work in the same hues. Now you pick a style and then you pick your metals and make sure that, you know, if you're going for golds, try to keep with the golds or try to keep with the chromes that keeps with this cohesiveness of you know, an overall style. This room is painted a uh, light gray, which is cold like Selena. And then I know that that looks yellow, but the sofa is actually beige. And then um, with these dark teal accents, um, that was the color that we brought in, but we kept it you know, very cold like she is. Uh, next, I would say I constantly, reupholster furniture. 
those chairs, I reupholstered the back with a different fabric just to get some pattern in there, but to keep the front, you know, neutral for the characters. Um, finding old pieces of furniture at flea markets or, you know, good furniture stores, estate sales, those things, those good bones you can't find now. So my like one of number one things to do is to find good furniture and reupholster it. Fabric is sometimes cheap. That's the, I mean, if you go down to a fabric district that in your city and find your, your fabric stores, you'll do much better than buying fabric online. You also have to feel it. You have to feel if it's going to be durable enough um, if you're going to get a lot of wear and tear. But upholstering furniture is a number one thing to do. And even if you have an old sofa that you love, reupholster it. It'll, it'll save you in the long run. So this is the cast of Veep, um, the first time they're seeing the set and coming in and running the scene. And um, it's a great feeling when everyone sort of is like, oh my God, look at this. This is great. Like, you know, it's nice. It's nice that they appreciate the work that goes into it. Um, I guess Julia Louis-Dreyfus liked it so much she put her feet right up on the glass table, which kind of gave me a heart attack. But uh, I guess it means that she felt right at home. So I can't really complain about that. Um, hit furniture stores and estate sales to get real furniture. That's that's the number one thing. Like this is real furniture. I'm not, I, I hardly ever buy Ikea, <laughs> except in my own home sometimes. Um, because although, and it's stylish and it's like this classic style, it's not going to last you long unless you don't move it. You can build an Ikea piece and if you never move it, it's probably great. But once you move Ikea, it never is good. Um, um, what is it? Um, like if you go to stores that um, co-sign things, co-sign furniture, that's always a good way to get real stuff. Craigslist, that's always kind of my go-to also. So yeah. Um, what else? If you like the shape of furniture that you see, but you're like, oh, that's a different wood tone than I have, paint it. Try to paint furniture. It's kind of a hassle, but it's fun. <laughs> it's fun. I mean, these chairs I loved, but they were like, I think they were white. And I was like, ugh, can't have white. So I chose this and then reupholstered the seats in this black leather. And then the chairs behind them to, as the eclectic look of this character, um, the one on the left, I painted like a deep pink just to give it some weirdo sort of balance back there. But painting furniture is also good. Don't go shabby chic. No more shabby chic. We're not, we're not doing that. I'm my show that I'm doing now is in the 90s. There's so much bad shabby chic back then. It's crazy. It's it was such a big thing. But don't do that. I don't I, I don't think it's coming back. Let's let's not let's let it go. Let's not do that. So the next thing is lighting. Lighting is so much fun. Here's one of my guys, Dave, putting up a light in a set. Um, my suggestion for a home is to keep, is to either install or keep your recessed lights for even tone lighting. And it gives opportunity also for just easiness of just flicking on a switch and everything comes on. Or if you have them dimmable, that's a huge plus. We made so many of, um, we put recess lights in three rooms here, all on dimmers. And then my fixtures are on dimmers. Dimmers are like aces, go for that. Um, I really love doing pairs of lamps, um, big pairs of like big statement lamps. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of. Um, lighting for me is mostly about the lamp style and not the wattage and things like that because I, the electrics do that. I don't have to supply light bulbs or anything. So to me, I'm looking more at the style and the shape. You're gonna have to worry about like, oh, it's only a 45 watt and it's gotta light this whole room. Those are things you kinda gotta think about when you're doing lighting in your home is 
what wattage. And now you've got LED bulbs that give you so much more blue in the room. This, you're lucky to find like incandescent. I don't even, they're not even selling incandescent lights in California anymore, I don't think. It's really hard. It's like a underground system here to get some old time light bulbs. So, and, and those are warm. Now, LEDs can be warm also. You got to know your scale of like wattage. I, I'm learning myself too, doing my own home now. I'm like, ah, this light's too blue and this. So I need my lighting guys to come over and help me. But I like pears. Now, another tip that I do all the time is I have lampshade, lampshades made. They, it's super helpful. It's really not that expensive. And if it's just for one or two lamps, awesome. I had these made for this hotel room in this uh, future series that I'm sure you'll watch. And it just, I just wanted this dark, like blackish purple uh, fabric. And when it's lit, it really gives it a little, you know, little like sexiness to it. Um, but you can do any shape, you can do any style. I mean, having a lampshade made, I know it sounds like, I, I mean, I never got into it until decorating on TV. I never really thought about it. Just go buy a lampshade, but you can have it made. And it, it really spiffies up a, like, even if you find an old lamp, a new shade will do it wonders. A pattern on a shade. Awesome. This I threw in to show you just go for mood lighting. Don't poo poo string lights. String lights can really bring in some moodiness. You don't actually have to see the string lights either. You can tuck them into your bookshelves. There's all these little LED lights on like wires that like light from behind. There's really great things that you can do with some little string light mood lights. Um, so think about that too, if you're trying to set a mood in, in a room, you don't want those overheads on all the time. You just want a little ambience. This, I, I really, I really believe in string lights. <laughs> Um, this is from the film Moxie, um, and this is more about picking, I have a pair of lights there, but I separated them because I still like the lights. And I think that's reality. I think, and that's obviously what I'm going for. Sometimes you buy a pair of lights, they don't have to be next to each other. Or if you get a big statement lamp, that's like your main focal point, then other Lamps could match in the room and floor lamps. They're always, always perfect for those dark corners. This, this lamp, this is also from Moxie. Um, this and then that kitchen lamp behind it are a pair that I bought off of Amazon. Um, Amazon, uh, Amazon and I are like this. I have my own Amazon rep at this point because I have a phone number people at Amazon because I buy so much of Amazon and I know there are no angels, but they deliver really quickly. And that's what I need. And I love them. I'm sorry. But this gives good ambience to the room. It warms it up, especially your dining area. You need good lighting. You need good food prep lighting. So think about recessed in your kitchen. Um, this style of lighting this is from the upcoming show also. You could carry through the style of lighting throughout. Like if this is mid-century and you're trying to keep in that, you know, keep it to keep the same style, but in different rooms. And that'll bring in the cohesiveness of, of, of doing all that. The same with traditional or modern or, your, or even like some gaudy style. All right, I'm taking a sip of water. Okay, arts and smalls, that's what we call it in my world. So art, that's, that's basic, everybody knows art. Art in your room brings in color, it mixes in your style. You can mix with some family photos. Um, it's very sentimental when you bring in family pics. If you, um, there's tons of things on Pinterest to like how to display your family photos. If you want to be very like monochromatic and all black and whites and like metal frames, that's always beautiful. My suggestion is change out your pictures. Just change them. I know you love that one picture. Just put it away for a year and bring it back. You'll love it even more. 
Um, I really think we have about, I literally have 28,000 photos in my, in my phone. So print them out, print out your pictures and, you know, make that a part of your art. You can print art basically any, any size these days. So if you like this, I played with scale. That picture wasn't really supposed to be that big, but I wanted something bold in the room and the single female, because this is for Selena on V, that single female with her back to you was kind of spoke to me about uh, and relatable to the character. So, and that is one of the few pieces in the room that's warm. So it draws a lot of attention in the room. The other one is a smaller and the other one was actually big and I made it smaller. And that's like a monochromatic older um, piece that I made smaller. So play with the scale of your, of your art also. Um, this, this is a trick that I do all the time. Like I said before, so that middle panel is fabric. So I just got a piece of fabric. They put it on a board, stapled it up, framed it, done. The panels on the side are wallpaper that I had them cut out and then put them together as like a triptych. So that I like to do a lot too is framing fabric um, because fabric's beautiful. It should be, you know, some of it is, <laughs> is really beautiful. So that could be a really nice framed piece of art in your room. Um, next, this is like, I just threw in because you're layering your artwork, your collages, your family photos. It's just layering it up and showing you like posters and kids' rooms and, you know, they're using their twinkle lights. So yeah. Next in my world is smalls. Smalls are tchotchkes, smalls are knickknacks. Smalls are things you're buying at Home Goods every season or Marshalls. They got great stuff. Um, but it's also personality. The smalls usually are where most of the personality is and these little things in life that, that we have and keepsakes and things like that. Um, I'm big on entry tables. I have another one later on, but your entry table is really important if you have space in your home and if you're staging. Um, you know, it's where you greet your, 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 the people. It's kind of the first thing they see in your home. So if you're able to throw a little personality and a little love to this little entry space, do it. You know, mirrors are always good. Obviously, you want to check yourself before you leave or come in. Your mail, but keep it nice. Keep it like in a nice thing like that's like a music holder that I found, an old music holder. And then we put the mail in that. Um, dried flowers are always pretty. So you're not always changing out flowers, but there's flowers there. You want a nice dish, throw your keys in. Just a nice proper little place to greet you when you come at home. And I always try to give that to the characters too. Like what do they do when they first walk in their door? So next is um, just a little peek into so when I get smalls, when I've gone to a prop house or if I bought them, we lay them out all on a table like this. This is a good table. Actually, it's like in order. It's not usually in that color order. Um, but that's pretty much everything puts it out on a table and then I decorate the sets. So that would be the next slide of like, and then I work it all into bookcases or you know around the room. But that's kind of the confusion that goes from, I could have picked those smalls a week ago and now they're on a table. Now I got to work them into this room. So it's kind of, it's crazy to me now doing my own house that everything sort of comes together because my house is not together. My house, this set is not ready to shoot. So um, bookcases are huge. Bookcases and bookshelves give you personality even if, if you want something that's formal like this, where you're showing off like old books and plates and um, chat, like statues that you've acquired, we've all got those yadros and hummels that we've collected over generations. Displaying them nicely and not crowded is really key because you want to be able to see them. If you have a lot, we'll get to that collections, but we'll get to that. Then bookshelves are functional in our world. This is from Moxie. I mean, it's 
functional in a sense of like, you're using these books all the time. You want to make them handy, but you're also working in some family photos. You're working in things you probably picked up from travels. So making them functional is a whole nother way, you know, to show your personality and still keep it nice, but using them more. Um, and then this is another entry table. I just wanted to show family photos, nice little mail dish. And this person was into birds and they have a nice artwork. Like, you know who this person is kind of from their entry table. Uh, don't forget about windowsills. Windowsills for me are, I love to put little character pieces in there. Even if it's like a wishbone, for, oh my God like a turkey or something like people have but like I've done some crazy little windowsill dressing uh it's great for herbs it's great you know to keep little pieces uh little tiny statues up there this piece um this uh, this is from moxie this piece uh, is just to get some color into that into that window I mean it's another piece of art in your window really so I don't know. When, don't forget about windowsills. Don't clutter them up, but like it's another little place to show personality. Collections, don't go crazy with collections. We've all done it. I used to collect those little um, crumb butlers, they're called. It's like they're like silver antiques, and it's what butlers would use to like sweep up crumbs from like proper people's tables. And then I found myself with like, 15, 12, 15 of them. And I'm like, where am I going to put all these? This is ridiculous. But I kept finding cool ones. And then I was like, oh, I got to scale it down. And now I have like four around here that are meaningful. That was the first one I bought. This one's copper. This one's, you know, the ones I really like. This one has little feet. Just don't go crazy with collections. This guy liked frogs way too much. Just scale down your collections. And, and if you're going to do collections, Display them orderly, I would say. You can't look on a shelf and have 50 frogs. If you had, you know, 15 and you could see what each of them are doing, that's that's better. That's better than 50 on a shelf. So yeah. Um, for me, smalls, just in like your home, they tell a story. This is a judge. She's got gavels. She's got paperwork. You know, she's got nice pens. So everything tells a story to me. Um, from art to smalls and furniture, all that. So yeah, they're all character pieces to me. <laughs> Tips for staging your home. Okay. Clean and crisp environment. I can't stress that enough. Like I said before, we don't want to see family photos, unfortunately, unless they're like, unless you should be in a catalog, don't display your family photos. You got to put them away. You're selling a dream, you're selling possibilities, you're selling a future to people. So keep it clean and keep it crisp. No clutter, no personality. That's, I mean, if you're selling, a, you know, this is beachy or whatever, okay, go with a theme, but then carry it throughout. But don't, don't keep pushing your style on people. You got to do like benign, like everybody loves a white sofa because they dream that they could live in reality with a white sofa. It's very hard to keep a white sofa clean, but this is a dream that you could have this home and have a, you know, perfectly white crisp sofa. Um, install lighting fixtures if you have to, that can be used with many different styles. Like this is just black and iron. And I know it's a little modern, but you could use that with many different styles. I think this might not be the best um, example, but try to go with lighting fixtures. Not, not like generic. No, have personality in them, but make sure that they're versatile to many styles. Add furniture that isn't bulky and that is on a smaller scale. I think a perfect example of this is those bar stools because you got the clear back. So it's like, oh, look, four people could eat here. There's no way four people could eat there, but the dream is you could get four people. That'd be really tight, but you want an illusion there. You wanna pick like 
a smaller scale to get it more furniture in there so the room looks bigger. You always want to assume that this room is bigger than it is. And so many pictures um, online on Redfin, Zillow, you go to look at the house, <laughs> it's so much smaller than the pictures. And you're like, what was this? They had this huge sofa in here. And you're like, oh no, it's just a settee. I didn't. So getting furniture into the space that is on a smaller scale will help you give an illusion that you can fit more people in here than you really could. <laughs> that's that's probably what I'm trying to say. This is Janet's void again. So think of your palette like a void. There's only three pieces of furniture besides the art. There's only three pieces of furniture in this space, but it's functional. So you're trying to sell like, oh, this room could, you could have a bed in here and you can have a desk and you can have this. You're trying to give this multifunctional uh, purpose to some rooms. So you can do that with just the suggestion of furniture, just the desk and a small chair, you know, smaller scale and, and it'll help sell that illusion. So this is a bathroom design that I did um, in, a, in a house. So this is their powder room before. And then this is it after where I used wallpaper on all four walls. I upgraded the lighting and the vanity. The lighting, they made that little hole up top. That was a mistake. Because the lighting is just that mirror. That, so then it, it made everything really simple and crisp. Um, the black faucets it's basically black and white everything pretty much is black and white now so that you can pop color in yourself when you're selling this next is another bathroom in the same house i think this was done in like the early 90s and then we took it to just black and white the tub is a single standing tub those doors are everywhere now i bought them on wayfair all of the bathroom fixtures I bought on Wayfair, the handles I bought on Amazon, went to a special place to get the stone, but even the tile is all Home Depot. Um, so that's one um, redo that I did. This is my house. This is my full bath. These were the pictures taken. This is how we bought it. This is the pictures taken. This is my own personal mood board because I had to sell it to my husband that this was what we were gonna do, so. <laughs> just to let them know this is it. And this is our finished. This is uh, this is basically all black and white. And then I love color. We both love color. So that black, that back tile on the back of the tub wall is uh, a hexagon tile pattern from the mood board. And then I made it on the top so that it didn't just stop. I wanted that zigzag um, in and out just to give it a little detail. I also did not install my glass sliding doors because I have two kids taking tubbies in there and it would have really been dangerous. So that's another tip for mommies. So take out your glass doors. This is our master bathroom. This is how we bought it. The next is my mood board again, <laughs> selling it to my husband. And this is the finish. Most of this is Wayfair and Home Depot and Amazon. I mean, I think everything there that it's just those three. The tile is the tile is Home Depot. All of the tile, I think, is Home Depot. Um, the vanity we kept and just painted. Hardware's from Amazon. The lighting fixture is Wayfair. The mirrors are Wayfair. The faucets are Wayfair. So it's really one-stop shopping in many places now, which is great. So yeah. So resources that I use and I would suggest. Um, oh, wait. First, I wanted to tell you of two things for inspiration um, for, for staging. You really should watch... Marie Kondo series tidying up on Netflix because it's real people tidying up and showing how they can can basically not stage their home, but clear out and get ready. If you're doing it yourself, it helps your mind. I'm a big fan of hers. I fold all my stuff like Marie Kondo. And Bargain Mansions. Bargain Mansions on HGTV with Tamara Day. She buys up these mansions in Kansas City 
for like a uh, hundred thousand or less flips them and makes a ton of money, but they're really, really run down. But my tip for that is to look at the finishes that she's using, look at the tiles that she's choosing and her color palettes. I really, I think she's great. I don't know where she came from. Uh, she's got great talent. I, I really like watching her. So, um, the resources that I use are basically Ikea. You can, you can fill up a cart and they'll fill any, they'll deliver for like 50 bucks. So try to get as much as you can. If you're going to go an Ikea way, I've said my piece about Amazon. I love it. Sorry. Target also has two day shipping and they have a really good home section. If you're looking for that and they have decent curtains and like bathroom pieces. Target's good. Living spaces, you're getting your bang for your buck there. They have great sets of furniture. If you just want to go in, buy a set of for coffee table and side tables, and they're they're comfortable too. Their sofas, their bedding is great. They've got great rugs for a good price. That's a good one. Home goods, can't live without. Can't live without home goods at this point. Pillows, throw blankets. I just uh, I have to live by a home goods for my job. Wayfair, here's the thing. If you sign up as a business program, like in their business program, you get more discounts. It's not a certain percentage every time. It might be 1%. I don't know. And then the next time you look at something else and it's like 80% off. And you're, it's, it's very it's here and there. But if you can sign up for a business account, it's totally worth it. I have my own Wayfair professional that I can chat with to check for shipping. She helps me to tell me like, you're not really going to get that in time. They're lying. Don't order it. Like they have always been super helpful to me. And, um, I don't, I should have looked up what you need to get into their business professional, but just lie. Who cares? Cherish is another thing online looking for good furniture. It's a little pricey, but you can sometimes get it down. And Craigslist is always, you can always find a gem on there. Swap meets, flea markets, you can find gems. Just search, search it out. So my closing, my conclusion would be to invest in good quality pieces because good style is timeless. Um, also, if you ever see a chair on TV and you like it, just try to reach out to those people and see where they got it. I get questions all the time, as small as like, where did you get that cup? I mean, anything. I People are out there in my position are usually on social media, um, Twitter, or Instagram, and ask them, where'd you get that pillow? Where'd you get that lamp? I love it. I need to have it. So yeah, that's it. Well, thank you so much, Kim. I, I think that a lot of people can get a lot of inspiration from your work and, and from the ideas that you presented today. I know that we're coming up on the hour, but for those of you who are tuning in, I know we have a number of questions that have come in. We'll, we'll do our best to get to them if you're able to stick around uh, for a few extra minutes here. Um, Kim, first up, um, one of the questions that, that we have is, is what happens to the set pieces after the shoot wraps? It's so sad. <laughs> um, well, a lot of it, if it's not like a permanent set, like if it's not like where the person lives or whatever, that's rented. A lot of it is rented. Um, but if I'm like reupholstering furniture or whatever, it's acquired by like right now I'm working for Fox. So then they have it acquired. Like at the end of Veep, I had over a football field of extra furniture that we had prop houses come in to see if they wanted to purchase any. And then basically it got sold to a liquidation center and then it gets pieced off some, uh, I know that they went in and specifically grabbed some pieces and then auctioned them off for charity, but mostly it's really sad. It's like liquidation centers. Wow. Yeah. They're, um... It's a waste. Yes, I will say, just so you know, there are some shabby chic fans amongst our attendees tonight who are rethinking their choices. Oh, yeah, <laughs> sorry. Um, another question is, you know, what guidance do you get, um, if any, from the director on, on the look and feel of the show? This, uh, especially with uh, one hour that I'm in now, I work more with the director because it's more drama and it's more like, I really want this to feel like or if we could get a sofa that she sinks into. Like there's much more conversations about 
the the furniture that the hero person is going to be using i feel right now a lot of like the comedy stuff is more like about the scene and is it going to work and is it how is the flow but um it, it's more about if the furniture can give them a feeling like just last week we're in a conference room and the director said, she said, I really want her to feel small. And she's surrounded by all of these men in the room and I want her to feel small. So I got like bigger size chairs and that's just tips, you know, and that's helpful. I'm always wanting that, that type of um, input to help me. Great. Quite a number of your fellow alumni have, Oh, a question wondering, you know, how did you find your way to Hollywood? You know, I know that you grew up in Philadelphia. You went to Philly U. Um, what brought you out there? I always loved film and TV. Like, I'm sure like my parents, like our West Coast video card was used like every day. So I just always loved it. And I never really thought I could do it or like it was a real job. Um, I know being influenced um, in high school from my art teacher also just like, oh, you know, there's this thing, interior design. And then like, you know, you love movies. What about like designing movies? And I was like, okay. Um, but it it happened that my boyfriend at the time was a film student and moved to LA. And so I was like, I'm, I'll try it. What? Do, I mean, I can't believe my parents let me go, but I went and I literally had like $3,200. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know, I want to run out of money or if I can't get a job, I'll be back and like, oh. So it took me eight weeks to get a job. And I honestly haven't had more than probably six weeks lacking of a job since. And it was real. I definitely implemented things that I learned in school. And I'm always, I would have never gotten the job on Wheel of Fortune if I didn't know CAD. Um, that's specifically why they hired me. So I... I used my learnings um, from interior design, but really started out as a, as an assistant, and you know, um, you know, running scripts and working the sets and working the office. And I basically had every position underneath me, so which is good because, and I think we should all sort of have that experience to know what other people do and everything. But it really was working my way up, and it took a it took a long time. I, I didn't get to start decorating, I think, till 2005, I think. So six years after graduating. Well, you're so, yeah. doing great work. And I can guarantee you that everyone back here in Philly in our rainy days are proud of you. And, mm. and thank you so much for spending your evening with us. Thank we you. Also to, we also want to thank everyone who has joined us this evening. Uh, we appreciate your questions and your participation. We invite you to continue to get connected with your fellow alumni and with Jefferson through our Jefferson Alumni Network at alumninetwork.jefferson.edu. We also have a number of great upcoming alumni events, which you can view our full schedule and register online at jefferson.edu slash alumni events. Thank you all again for joining us. Have a wonderful evening and be safe. Thank you. Bye-bye.